Roses for Mama by Jeanette Oak. Chapter 10. A Birthday. Why don't you go? I really don't have much time for a party, Angela said to Thomas. It's you who Trudy wants anyway, she was thinking, but she didn't voice it. Thomas was shaking his head. Nope, you don't go, I don't go. Angela was a bit annoyed and a little surprised at his response. He usually was not so stubborn. Truth is, I didn't really have much fun at the last one, and I hate to leave the- They were fine last time, remember? Angela had to admit that the children had gotten along perfectly without them for a few hours. I really don't see why. Thomas cut her short. You need to get out. You didn't have fun last time because you had forgotten how. You are not a little old lady, Angela. You are seventeen. Eighteen, corrected Angela with a deep sigh. All right, eighteen, Thomas agreed. Tomorrow you'll be eighteen, but there's still a long way from eighty, and that's how you're acting. Now get yourself all prettied up and let's get over there, before the party is over and the food is all gone, teased Thomas. Reluctantly, Angela pulled herself from her chair and put aside the socks she had been darning. She didn't feel one bit like partying, especially not at Trudy's house. It did not take her long to change her dress and pin her hair firmly into place. She dusted a bit of fine flour across her nose and tucked a clean hanky into her pocket. She knew she wouldn't enjoy this evening, but Thomas seemed to have his heart set on going, and Angela did not want to spoil it for him. After all, Thomas was not old either, and he had certainly missed out on his share of fun. It could get cold later in the evening, so Angela grabbed a shawl and went to meet Thomas at the kitchen door. She was expecting a bit of a fuss from Louise, who felt she was old enough to be in on the entertainment of the young folks of the community. And Louise didn't care much for her appointed task of the evening. Angela had posted all three youngsters at the kitchen table to do review lessons. She believed it was important over the summer months to have them study what they had learned the year before. They often argued vociferously, saying that none of the other mothers demanded so much from their offspring, but Angela held firm, and one evening a week was deemed study night. Angela was about to release them from tonight's assignment and tell them they could read a book of their choice instead, but when she entered the kitchen, all three were working diligently. Louise hardly lifted her head. We won't be long, Angela promised, and Derek raised his eyes for a moment and nodded. Louise and Sarah kept their eyes on the open books before them. Angela shrugged. It seemed that Thomas was the only one with any enthusiasm for the party. Thomas helped her climb into the wagon, and then they were off. It was a clear evening, and the moon was just coming up. Angela decided to forget her ill humor and enjoy the ride. The fields of ripened grain stretched along beside the roadway, promising another good harvest. Dear God, don't let anything happen to it. Angela prayed silently. We need it so. The children need new things for school. They grow so fast, I can hardly keep up with them. And Thomas, it's been years since he's had a new suit, and I have let down every hem and let out every seam, and he still looks like a little boy on a growing spurt instead of like a man. And I know it must embarrass him some, Lord, even if he doesn't say. Angela stole a look at Thomas. He had filled out to be almost the size her father had been. In fact, he reminded her more of their papa every day in appearance and carriage. Thomas must have felt her eyes on him, for he turned and gave her a grin. Still mad? he teased. Angela dipped her head. How could she be angry with Thomas? He deserved to have a good time. If he wished to party, then she would party. Though she still couldn't understand why he had insisted that she go along. She gave Thomas a reluctant smile. No, I'm not mad, she responded, and the smile came in its fullness. Good, was all he answered, and he turned his attention back to the horses. They rode in silence for several moments. Then Angela turned to her brother and asked a blunt question. Thomas, if you could be anything you wanted, do anything you wanted, would you be a farmer? Thomas looked directly at her, and his eyes seemed to darken slightly. He appeared reluctant to answer, but he finally began to shake his head slowly. Don't you like to farm? Well, it's not... not that I don't like it, really. It's just that I think there is something I would like better. I never knew that. Angela replied softly, but then I never even thought about it before. There was silence again. Finally, Angela took up the conversation again. What is it that you think you'd like better? She asked. Research, he said without hesitation, with grains and fruits and things. Angela nodded. She should have known Thomas was always working with his seeds and hybrids. But you do that now, she reminded him. 
not the way I'd like to. I have no space, no training, no proper equipment, and very little time. He finished with a sigh. Angela nodded her head. He was right. He did have very little time, and he did not have the proper tools or the room to work. More than once, his precious plants had frozen, and he had been set back in his experimentation. Angela hadn't realized until now what a great disappointment that must have been for him. They rode in silence again, while Angela mulled over the dream Thomas had just shared. If it wasn't for the children, she was thinking, Thomas might have a chance to work with his seeds. I could find a job, or... But there was no use dreaming. The children needed his care. And you? asked Thomas. Angela came back from her reverie with a start and looked at her older brother. She shrugged and shifted her shawl in her lap. Oh, I don't know. Nothing, I guess. At least, nothing like that. There was a time when I thought I would like to be a teacher, but not anymore. I would have liked to go to school more, though, just to learn. I had to quit so early. But then, I guess one never needs to stop learning, from books and... and everything in life. I can read the lesson books the children bring home. Is that why you are so... so... Angela knew Thomas thought she was too hard on the kids about their studies. He had never fully agreed with her regarding the summer review sessions, but he had always backed her. Is that why you are so determined that the three of them make the most of their studies? He finished at last. Angela nodded. It seems such a shame not to get all they can out of their years in school. They're over all too soon anyway, and then adult responsibilities crowd in and take over, and there is no more time to learn from books, Angela said soberly. Thomas nodded. Yet said Angela hesitantly. I almost let them off tonight. It just didn't seem fair that we were off to a party and they had to sit there at the kitchen table with their lesson books. But they were so intent when we left that I decided not to disturb them. Then Angela changed the subject. Who's going to be at the party? She asked. The usual, I guess, answered Thomas. Angela wondered why his casual answer didn't match his rather knowing expression. Who's going to be there? She repeated. I guess we'll see when we get there was all Thomas would say as he clucked to the horse. When they entered the Summers' yard and Angela saw the number of teams tied to the fence posts, she thought the whole community must be there. Looks like Trudy is throwing quite a party, she murmured. Thomas tied the team and extended his arm to Angela. She took it and let him escort her around to the back of the house. There didn't seem to be anyone around, and Angela was about to suggest that they try the front door instead. As they rounded the corner, an explosion of sound greeted them. Surprise! Surprise! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! The shouts were coming at Angela from all sides as heads began to pop out from every tree and shrub. Angela drew a quick breath, and Thomas had to hold fast to the hand tucked in his arm. It was then that Angela noticed the streamers strung in the tree branches. And then an even more amazing sight caught her attention. There were Derek, Louise, and Sarah, dressed in their Sunday finery and yelling right along with the rest of the crowd, Surprise! Surprise! How did you get here? Angela stammered. We cut across the field, Louise called cheerily, and Angela knew she had the answer to their diligent studying. Louise was getting in on the party after all. The evening was a blur to Angela. She had never been the guest of honor at a party before, and she wasn't sure how much she enjoyed being the center of attention now. Still, she did appreciate all the effort Trudy had put into the event. She determined to be kinder, a little more tolerant of her friend, until she spotted Trudy hovering around Thomas again. My, what a good deal of time and expense just to get Thomas over here, Angela mused. Thomas had turned down each invitation to the other parties Trudy proposed, up until now. Angela shook her head. Some girls were so foolish. Angela noticed that Thomas did not devote his total evening to Trudy. He mixed easily through the crowd, chattering and laughing and teasing. He truly seemed to be enjoying himself. Derek hung back some, but gradually joined the younger boys. They mostly sat and watched the older ones. Angela decided that perhaps they were studying the older youth so they would know how to behave when it was their turn. Louise was more socially inclined and made repeated attempts to join in. Angela knew how much her sister longed to be a part of everything that was going on while still feeling unsure of herself. Angela ached for the young girl. It just takes time, she whispered under her breath. Don't try to rush it, Louise. You'll be an adult soon enough. Sarah, still a little girl in the eyes of most of the partygoers, was pampered and fussed over. Sarah enjoyed the spotlight and seemed to feel that she deserved every nod and smile. She bounced about, chattering and giggling and accepting every goodie offered to her. 
They played party games and a few jokes on one another. Then Angela had to cut the enormous birthday cake and serve the pieces to each one present. By the time she had finished giving out the cake, the others had finished eating and were busy chatting and teasing again. Trudy suggested a sing-song, looking at Thomas for his answer. Not tonight, he answered. When I get singing, I hate to stop and I have to get the younger ones home. Luis gave Thomas an impatient scowl. Angela can stay, Thomas was quick to say. I'll leave the team for her and we'll walk across the field. I'll drive her home, offered Thane. But I, I should... Began Angela. Nonsense, Thomas replied. It's your birthday party. You stay and sing. I'll tuck them in. Louise pushed out her lip, but a word from her older brother quickly erased the pout. Angela wondered what Thomas had whispered to her. Trudy looked about as upset as Louise. For a moment, she stood silently, her face clouded with disappointment. Then she flipped her reddish hair and crossed to Thomas. She laid a hand on his sleeve and looked up at him with her long eyelashes fluttering silently. You can come back after you've tucked them in, Angela heard her say. We'll see, nodded Thomas as Angela turned away. Thomas gathered up the three younger ones and they headed for home, calling their thank yous over and over as they left. They had enjoyed the party, and Angela was glad, for their sakes, that she had consented to come. The singing began, and Angela found herself tucked between the preacher's two sons. They sang heartily, one a bass, the other a tenor. Of sorts, he never could quite find the right notes. Angela found it easy to forgive the missed notes, but the constant shuffling and vying for her attention unnerved her. I just turned 19, Roger informed her. Angela congratulated him. I'm only six months younger said Peter from the other side, edging a bit closer and making Angela feel uncomfortable. They began another song, and Angela joined in heartily, glad for a chance to put an end to the conversation. At the first break, Peter whispered in her ear, You want anything? Cake or more punch or anything? Angela graciously declined. Your shawl? asked Roger, pointing to where Angela's shawl still hung on a nearby shrub. Angela wondered how he could possibly think she needed her shawl. She felt so crowded that she was overly warm, not cool. "'No, thank you. I'm fine,' she responded. "'It's a nice evening, isn't it?' said Roger. "'I bet the stars would really show up away from the campfire. Would you like to walk around a bit?' Angela declined that offer as well. She turned her head slightly to see Thane standing just to their left. It was not hard to catch his eye. She mouthed the words, "'I think I'm ready to go,' and he must have been able to read her lips. He came immediately to where she was sitting offered her his hand, and helped her up from her sitting position on the grass. Angela smiled her good night to two disappointed young men, and wound her way through the crowd of young people to thank her hostess. "'When you get home, you can tell Thomas,' Trudy began. Angela nodded in understanding, thanked her for the party, and turned to go before Trudy could return to her sentence. It was a beautiful evening. Even now, Angela did not need her shawl. She tossed it carelessly over the back of Thane's buggy seat, and sighed deeply as she looked up at the multitude of stars. The moon cast a soft, mystic light on the world about her. "'Have fun?' asked Thane. "'I I guess I did,' answered Angela. She would never have thought to be anything but candid with Thane. Besides, he knew her so well that he would not have been fooled anyway. "'I certainly got the surprise of my life. Why, I never dreamed that, that anyone would have remembered my birthday.' They rode in silence for a few moments, and then Angela asked abruptly, "'Has Thomas ever talked to you about... about his... his longing to work with seeds as a researcher?' "'He shows them to me all the time.' "'No, I mean to really work with plants and things. In a big... where do they work with seeds anyway?' "'In a laboratory, I guess, or out in small fields or something.' "'Well, wherever. He would like to do that.' Thane nodded. He didn't seem at all surprised." "'What would you like to do?' asked Angela, "'if you could do anything you wanted to.' "'Marry a pretty girl,' responded Thane, without a moment's hesitation. "'Be serious,' protested Angela, giving him a little push. "'Oh, I am,' he insisted, but there was teasing in his voice. "'No, really, tell me, if you could do anything you would like.' "'Farm,' said Thane, and Angela could not have been more surprised at his answer. "'Farm?' she echoed. She looked at him her eyes big in the moonlight. "'Are you really serious?' she asked. "'Why do you think I spend so much time out at your place?' he asked, and Angela could hear the teasing again. "'You're joshing,' she said. His voice softened. "'You want the truth,' 
the real truth. Okay, I really would farm. I've always loved helping Tom and learning about planting and harvesting and caring for the animals. But that's not the reason I spend so much time as I can at your place. Angela knew he was serious now. Are you surprised? Yes, said Angela. Yes, I guess I am. Does your... your pa know? About my wanting to farm, or my reason for visiting your place? Thane was quiet for a minute, and then went on. It doesn't seem too likely that I ever will farm, so I haven't really said anything to anyone. Angela nodded slowly, and then reached out and took Thane's arm. Thane gave her hand a slight squeeze in response. It's really strange, isn't it? Angela said. Thomas is farming, and he wants to leave and do something else. You work with your father in a good business in town, and you want to farm. It seems that life gets terribly mixed up at times. Angela sighed deeply. And you? asked Thomas. I, I want you both to be happy, replied Angela with deep feeling. But for you, prompted Thane, what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know, sighed Angela. But tears formed in the corner of her eyes. For now, I guess, I guess I just want to care for the youngsters, to try to raise them as Mama would have, and I can't. It's too big a job for me, Thane. You're doing just fine, Thane assured her, pressing her hand lightly. Angela pulled out her handkerchief and dabbed her eyes. Then her chin lifted slightly. She looked ready to take up her task. And what about your life? Thane pressed. They won't need you forever. Don't you think you have the right to make some plans of your own? I don't know, said Angela honestly. I try not to think ahead any further than to getting the children raised. They reached the farmyard, and Thane stepped down from the buggy and turned to lend a hand to Angela. He led her to the veranda and up the steps. He still had not released her hand. Tired? he asked. Angela responded with a shrug of her shoulders. I guess I am. I... I'm not sure I'm ready for sleep, but I'd better go in. Thomas might want to go back for the sing-song. Is that why you left early? Angela laughed, a soft, good-humored laugh. The real reason, she confided, was because those Merrifield boys had me smothered. I noticed, said Thane, sounding a bit annoyed. I'd have liked to have banged their heads together. Well, it was time to leave anyway, Angela responded quickly. Thanks for bringing me home. I'd better go in. I, I have something for you before you go. Thane reached into a pocket of his coat. What? began Angela. A little birthday gift. Oh, Thane, exclaimed Angela. You shouldn't. Now, don't try to tell me what I should or shouldn't do. He chuckled. Turn around. He instructed softly, and Angela did as bidden. He reached his arms over her shoulders to settle something around her neck. In the moonlight, she saw it glisten, but it was too dark for her to make it out properly. Thane fastened it without a fumble, and then Angela felt something pressed lightly against her hair. Her breath caught. It was as though, as though he had kissed the top of her head like her papa used to do with her mama. But no, surely Thane wouldn't. There, he said, his lips close to her ear. Happy birthday. I do hope that we, that you, will have many, many more. Thank you, she whispered back, wondering why they were speaking so softly. Thank you. I can can hardly wait to get into the light so I can see. He laughed at her, a soft, merry laugh. Well, off you go then. Sweet dreams. She stepped away, then back again. Thane had not moved. Thane, she said, her voice breathless. Thank you so much for, for everything. She reached up on tiptoe and gave him a light kiss on the cheek, then hurried across the veranda and into the house. Thomas was sitting at the kitchen table reading one of the study books. He lifted his head when she entered the room, and she pointed to the cameo that hung from her neck on its silver chain. She lifted it with trembling fingers and studied it closely in the light. From Thane, she said softly, her eyes sparkling. For my birthday. Thomas nodded, showing no surprise at her announcement. Isn't it just, just beautiful? whispered Angela, and she moved toward the stairs with misty eyes. She forgot all about asking Thomas if he wished to go back to the party.